Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about inside angles and outside angles, and in particular we're going to be using the formulas for the inside angles and outside angles, which hopefully you've already come up with on your own. So, the inside angle formula, the measure of an inside angle, and remember an inside angle is just an angle formed by two chords intersecting inside a circle. So the measure of an inside angle is the measure of arc 1 plus the measure of arc 2 divided by 2. And when I say arc 1 and arc 2, here I've got these two chords intersecting in the, in the middle of a circle, inside a circle. And so if I call this my inside angle, that angle X, this arc here would be arc 1, and this arc down here would be arc 2. So if I want to calculate the measure of that angle X, I just take the measure of arc 1, the measure of arc 2, add them together, and divide by 2. So let's take a look at these examples. Example 1A, here I've got an inside angle right here, angle X, and I've got the measure of this arc and the measure of this arc given to me, so I just need to plug them into my formula. So the measure of angle X is going to be equal to 116 plus 70 divided by 2. So let's see, that's going to be 186 divided by 2, which is 93 degrees. So the measure of angle X would be 93 degrees. Example 1B. Again, I have another inside angle here, two chords intersecting inside a circle. So the measure of this angle is going to be the measure of this arc plus the measure of this arc divided by 2. Now the difference between these two, I notice that what I'm looking for in this case is not the actual measure of the inside angle, it's actually the measure of one of the arcs. Well, I'm still going to use this same formula. I'm just going to be plugging in my numbers into different places. In this case, my inside angle is 120, so that's going to go here to measure the inside angle. 120 equals the measure of arc 1, which is 160, plus the measure of arc 2, which is x, divided by 2. And now I just have an equation that I need to solve. Let me put this over 1, so now I can see it's a proportion, which means I just need to cross multiply. 2 times 120 is 240, and that equals 160 plus x. And if I subtract 160 from both sides, then I get x equals 80. All right, example number C, example 1C, at first glance this looks like it's pretty similar to example B, but in fact there's a slight difference, and I don't know if you noticed or not, but I've been given these two arcs, if I call that arc 1, and I'll call this arc 2 where my X is, which looks kind of like this picture right here. However, notice that the angle that I have that's inside my circle, it's not one of these two angles that goes with these two arcs. It's this angle over here, which it turns out forms a linear pair with these two angles. So, the first thing I want to do is determine what's the value of this angle right here. Well, that shouldn't be too hard. 180 minus 139. Let's see. 2 minus 1. That's 41, so now I know the measure of this angle is 41 degrees. Now I'm going to use this angle, the 41 degree angle, I'm going to use that in my inside angle formula. So let's see, 41 equals arc 1, which is 40, plus arc 2, which is x, divided by 2. And again, similar to this one, I'm going to set it up as a proportion. I want to cross multiply, 2 times 41 is 82. 1 times 40 plus x is 40 plus x. And if I subtract 40 from both sides, then I get x equals 42. All right, now let's take a look at the outside angle formula. The measure of an outside angle, and an outside angle, remember, is an angle that's formed by two secant lines, or sometimes tangent lines that intersect outside a circle. So in this case, the angle is formed by these two secant lines that are intersecting here outside the circle. Well, in this case, the measure of our outside angle, we express like this. The measure of the outside angle is equal to the measure of, 
the big arc minus the measure of little arc divided by 2. And when I say big arc and little arc, I'm talking about the arcs that are created by these two secant lines. And see, these two secant lines, they cut out two arcs in the circle. There's one arc, and there's the other arc. So this is my big arc, and this is my little arc. So now I have my formula. Let's take a look at some examples using this formula. Example 2a, in fact, in this picture looks an awful lot like this picture. Here's my big arc, 90 degrees. Here's my little arc, 20 degrees, and here's the angle I'm looking for. I just need to plug that into my formula. So x equals measure of big arc is 90 minus the measure of little arc, which is 20, divided by 2, and that gives me x equals 90 minus 20 is 70. 70 divided by 2 is 35 degrees, and x is 35 degrees. All right, example 2b, here I have two tangent lines, but the tangent lines, based on where they intersect in a circle, they still give me two arcs. They give me this big arc here, and they give me this little arc here. Now, I notice, though, that I only have the measure of the big arc. However, that's not going to cause me too much trouble because the measure of the entire circle, the arc measure of the entire circle is going to be 360 degrees. So this piece right here, I'm told, is 240. That means this piece right here must be 360 minus 240, which is 120. So the measure of this arc is 120. Now I can plug it into my outside angle formula just like before. So the measure of that angle is measure of the big arc minus the measure of the little arc divided by 2. 240 minus 120 is 120 divided by 2, which is 60 degrees. Okay, now example 2C. So here I've got, again, an external, uh, an angle formed by two uh, lines. In this case, one is a secant line and one is a tangent line. And my angle is outside the circle. And I can see that I have my, it looks like my little arc is given to me here, 65 degrees. My big arc is right here. But I don't know the measure of that arc, so I'm going to have to calculate it. And again, I'm going to use the fact that the total arc measure of a circle is 360 degrees. I know this arc is 65. I know this is 120. Well, this must be the part that's left over. So let's see, 120 plus 65 is 185. And if I subtract that from 360, 360 minus 185 is going to give me 175. So now I know the measure of this angle is 175 degrees. Now I've got all of my arc measure information I can plug into my formula here. So the measure of this angle, x, equals 175, the measure of my big arc, minus 65, the measure of my little arc, divided by 2. 175 minus 65 is 150. 10 divided by 2, 110 divided by 2 is 55 degrees. Now, the next example, we have a picture of a circle and we have a whole bunch of different uh, lines and chords and diameters drawn on the circle. And down there along the side, I'm asked to find the measure of all of these different angles, angles 1 through 8. So when I first look at this, it looks like, man, there's an awful lot of stuff in this picture, and there's a whole lot of angles I'm supposed to find. How am I going to find all these angles? Well, one of the things that I notice about this picture is that I actually have arc measures for almost all of the arcs in the circle. That is, this arc here, AB, I've got that one, 80 degrees. AE, arc AE is 36, arc DE is 115, this one I don't have, this one I have, and this one I don't have. So if I could just figure out these two arcs, 
then I would know the measure of all of the arcs in the circle, and that I can see would be very helpful because I know a whole bunch of ways to calculate, for example, central angles, or inscribed angles, or outside angles, or inside angles. So let me go ahead and calculate these two missing arc measures. And let's see, I think I'm gonna start with this one here. I can see AC is a diameter because it goes through the center of the circle, which means this is a semicircle down here. I know the measure of this arc and the measure of this arc. So if I can subtract those from 180, that will give me the measure of this arc. So, okay, 36 plus 115. 36 plus 115. Three, four, five. That's 151. And if I subtract that from 180, 9, 29. So I know this angle now, excuse me, this arc measure is 29 degrees. This arc, I can see is the missing piece from this semicircle here, so let me do the same thing as I did before. 80 and 85 is 165. And if I subtract that from 180, then that's going to give me this missing piece here. So 180 minus 165, let's see, 10 minus 5. So this is 15 degrees. So now I know the measure of all of the arc pieces in this circle, now I should be able to figure out the measure of all of these different labeled angles here, labeled, uh, labeled angles one through eight. And let's see, I, actually I would start with probably angle eight here since this is a central angle, and since this arc that it's intercepting is 80 degrees, well I know right away the measure of this angle is 80 degrees. Now from here, I can, I can go to a lot of different places I would probably start with these inscribed angles because I know that an inscribed angle is half of the measure of the arc that it intercepts. So angle 5, I can see angle 5 is intercepting this arc right here, which is 36 degrees, which means angle 5 must be half of 36, which is 18 degrees. So now I know angle 5. Let's see, here's another inscribed angle right here, angle 2. And angle 2 is intercepting arc... BC. Well, arc BC is made up of this arc and this arc, 15 degrees and 85 degrees. So if I add those two together, I get 85, not, I get 100 degrees here. So angle 2 is an inscribed angle for a 100 degree arc, which means it must be half of that arc measure, which means angle 2 must be 50 degrees. Now, I'm going to let you figure out the rest of these angles, and you're going to probably be using, say for this one, your outside angle formula, and for this one probably your inside angle formula, and you might even have to use something that you know about the three interior angles of triangles to find some of these. So I'm going to leave these uh, remaining angles for you to find, and we'll take a look at these in class tomorrow.